Hi, I'm Jim W6LG for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. What can you build with a used meter from a swap meet, swap meet a low noise 30 dB amplifier uh, bought off of Amazon.com for about $15. A metal box like that one, coax connector, and maybe a switch, maybe an LED, some other stuff. Stay tuned and I'll show you what I built. Actually, I built two of them. Whiskey 6 Lima calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. So I bought this um, 50 microamp meter, panel meter, at a swap meet. And I think I paid a couple of bucks for it. It's a really nice meter. It must weigh three or four pounds. It's heavier than heck. Um, it's well insulated. It's RF protected, and it has a nice uh, a nice meter movement. If you see something like this at a swap meet, why not buy it? Uh, if it's a zero to one milliamp meter and it looks halfway decent and if it appears to work, um, buy the thing because you'll end up using it on uh, projects. This one happens to be fifty microamps, which is really hard to come by. If I were to buy it new, it might be fifty, a hundred bucks. So what did I build? Well, uh, using a uh, an LNA, so it goes, uh, I'll put up a diagram, it goes through um, coax connector, a low noise amplifier, a couple of diodes, a potentiometer, and this meter. So what it's reading is field strength. Um, in the 1960s, this is kind of what we used all the time to tune mobile antennas. You um, set this off in the distance, away from the vehicle, adjust the stinger on the vehicle until that deflected, go for maximum signal strength and, and you're good to go. Um, this has a lot of uses around the shack. For example, uh, if I wanted to uh, kind of sniff out RF leaks, uh, this would quickly show it. How hard is it? It's not hard. Uh, it, there's just a few discrete parts. Um, so it's just a simple one in 34, one in 914, that kind of diode. Um, usually they're pennies a piece and the hardest thing is to find this meter again if you see this meter or um, here's one an old SWR meter and this does have a field strength meter built into it uh, it's not much use it doesn't have a lot of use as a uh, uh, an SWR meter but it'll work inside are the strips to uh, pick up the forward and reflected voltages and there's a couple of diodes here that rectify the voltage coming down uh, this whip. And it actually works pretty good. Now you can, what I did, uh, one of my, uh, actually I built two of these things. One of them is parts from one of these things that was just parts. So I found a meter, uh, a box, and some other stuff at a swap meet. Bought it for a couple of bucks. Uh, it, Really, what had to work was the was the meter because the diodes are easily replaced. So what what did I make? Well, here's an example um, of one of the finished uh, meters. As it turned out, I had to put a um, kind of a cleat or a, a a base on it because the meter was mounted forward and it wanted to tip forward. So I used an SO two thirty nine on the top. Um, I did put in a uh, uh, panel light uh, to indicate it's got voltage. Um, not sure how useful that is, but it's it's good to know if it's running on batteries when it's on and when it's not. Uh, I found a, a potentiometer in my junk box. Value of the pot, 10 to 25K, something like that. The reason why I used an SO230 on the top is just about anything will fit in that. could be a length of wire jammed in the top, could be an old uh, whip, whip, it could be um, with an adapter, there goes one on the floor, um, a rubber duck. Another thing you can do with it is, uh, for example, let's say you go to your radio club meeting, everybody's got some kind of handy talkie with a, a bag full of adapters, you can test different rubber duckies and see which one uh, does the best. So I'm impressed with how how well they work and how handy they are for example you could have this thing uh 
if you wanted to have it powered, you can use an LNA. If you don't want it powered, it still may be sensitive enough. So it literally could be in your radio room, as I use it, uh, as indication that there's RF coming out of the antenna. So it shows you that there is some field strength. Also, if you walk around the backyard, if you have a dipole and you're not sure which way it might be radiating, you can get a feel for that even though you're close to the ground with one of these things and some kind of a rod out the top. Um, another one that I built is this one. Um, this was the parts and pieces of an old uh, SWR meter. So I took the front cover off. Uh, it has a different knob because the knob was missing. But the meter was still good, and inside is a battery. I may add an LED to the top, which it does not have. And I took the switch that would normally do forward and reverse. It now turns the uh, the device on and off. All right, let me show you how the thing works. Um, they're really handy whether you put it in this kind of a box, this kind of a box, it doesn't matter. Moral of the story, if you see panel meters at a swap meet, uh, buy a couple of them. You can use it for all kinds of things. If you're building a linear amplifier, like one of the ones that I built, or you want to build a watt meter, any number of things, uh, panel meters are becoming harder and harder to find. They're also very expensive. The ones from China that I used in my big linear amplifier are, are garbage by comparison to meters like, uh, like this one, which are uh, just so well engineered and work so great. All right, I'm going to stop the camera. Um, Go over here and uh, do a quick demo. If you have any questions uh, after the uh, the demo, uh, please post them below. If you have an answer to somebody's question, please uh, please do answer. All right, let me show you a few things with these uh, field strength meters. Okay. Roger QSL, gracias. Suerte. Saludos uh, uh, desde Croacia. Buenas noches. Uh, a 7 Hotel Lima Bravo, 9A, 9A. California. California. Who was California? Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Jim, good afternoon. <laughs> You're fast 9 plus plus Jim, over. Uh, yeah, nice to hear you. Big surprise. I've been listening for about an hour. You went from S7 to now 20, 25 over. So the band is changing. How are you, Emil? Yeah, okay, fine, Jim. Good, uh, uh, good to meet you again. Well, today it was 5 o'clock local time here. I was uh, uh, very busy with the cutting grass, and uh, just uh, with a short break, I turned on radio, and I have heard some uh, very strong Japanese stations. So I said, uh, well, uh, uh, tonight, the West Coast is uh, going to be very strong, so you are the, 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 the proof, or? Oh, good. Well, happy to be that kind of proof. Uh, as I said, you're getting stronger every minute, so. Emil, nice to hear you. 5x9 plus 20 to 30, 73 from W6LG. Thanks, Emil. Okay. You are talking, and you are stronger than, than, than some uh, Europeans who are calling. It's unbelievable. Well, we have heard many West Coast stations and also V7. V7 stations were very, very strong uh, tonight, as you over. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm actually videoing this uh, this conversation, so I'll see if I can upload it to YouTube. And uh, sh if it works out okay, it'll show you how strong you are here. It's it's really amazing. Uh, propagation between Zagreb. Thank you for calling in. Very, uh, very good afternoon and good night from Croatia. And uh, see you again, my friend. Always a big, big, big signal. W6LG, this is 